How big was the largest flying bird ever to live on Earth? Well, it's extinct now, but when it was alive, it had a wingspan of about 21 feet, which is about four times the height of an average human, and more than twice the wingspan of the current largest flying bird, the albatross. Hi, I'm James Gurney, and I just received a call from Scientific American to reconstruct this bird called a Pelagornis. I've done some small sketches here in gouache, showing it taking off from land and from water. And the art director wants to see this image of it on land, the smaller birds in front of it, using this color scheme with the warm golden colors. But to do it, I want to build a maquette or a reference model to help me with the lighting and the pose. So let's go down to the workshop and I'll show you how to make that maquette. I call this a 2D to 3D maquette because I start with a 2D printout of a drawing on paper, just a photocopy, and then match them up front to back uh, using the light table with the skeleton on the inside, and then cut them out, and then they should be fairly poseable. I glue the two halves of the scientist drawing together, and then looking at the skeleton I make a wire skeleton to match it exactly out of aluminum wire. Using two matching copies of the scientist drawing, I create a sandwich, two layers of paper with the wire in the middle of the sandwich, and then cut it out with a mat knife. Once that's dry, I use two-part epoxy sculpting compound to beef up the head and the body. This sculpting compound dries without oven curing. It's strong, but you only have about three hours of working time. Once everything's dry, I cut out the paper and then paint the body using acrylic paint. I'm back in the workshop, and what I want to do is design the base for this guy to be taken off from. So what I've done is I've gone in the backyard to collect some broken pieces of stone. Then I'll hot glue these pieces down and then texture it with some moss and that'll give me something that I can light in the same lighting as the maquette. Two wires hang from below the maquette for the legs. One that reaches down and contacts the ground and the other one that's back in the running posture. It's a very fragile looking body and it probably didn't spend much time flapping. It would want to take off into the wind if possible under ideal conditions and spend most of its life in soaring flight. But now I have a visual challenge, how to make this bird look as big as it is when I don't have any familiar scale references. And the solution I come up with is to contrast it with a flock of smaller birds which were known from the same time and place. And now I've sprayed this with workable fixative and that seals the surface enough so it won't smear when I do this step which is to take matte medium, acrylic matte medium, using a brush, and then once that's covered, the full surface is covered, I can use a scraper, squeegee. And for a little extra texture in the focal area, I use acrylic modeling paste. When that's dry, I put some color over the whole thing using uh, some casein paint. And that just gives it an overall warm tone and gives me some ideas of where the light and dark areas will be. I'm ready to go in with oil paint. And I mix up five pools of color for the gradation in the sky from upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right gradating those colors into each other so that it's not just a flat color. The photograph of the backlit rock gives me wonderful information not only about texture but about shallow depth of focus. I used both opaque paint and also transparent glazes to build those rock textures. One of the remarkable things about Pelagornis are the tooth-like structures on its bill, the pseudo-teeth, which were found by the paleontologists on the specimen, which came from Charleston, South Carolina. Those tooth-like structures would have helped it to catch and hold its prey, and it ate things like squid. 
I like to think of paleo art as if it's seen through the lens of a camera. So I use motion blur and a lens flare. To paint that flare on the wing means having the sun right up next to the edge of the wing and then showing the gradation of light just to the edge of where that light flares out across the form. I'm most of the way finished now, but I need to look over the picture closely to see if there's any areas that need work. And right now the tail is not working that well. It doesn't really look like the feathers are fanning out uh, into a tail-like structure that can really work like an elevator. And with that, the painting is finished and ready to be delivered to the Scientific American magazine headquarters, where it'll be used as a feature title spread for this story about the giants of the sky. Thank you.